Welcome back to Politics Unplugged. The Republican-led legislature keeps sending bills to the governor's office, but she keeps sending them right back with a veto stamp. So what do Republican lawmakers do going forward? Here to talk about that is House Majority Leader Leo Biasucci. I want to thank you for joining us here. And obviously, the relationship between Republicans in the, in the legislature and the governor's office kindly be, can, can be called icy right. at this point. But I do want to start off... Uh, this uh, this past week, the governor did announce she was going to be, uh, you know, investing five hundred thousand dollars into a fund to flip the legislature blue so she can get control of that. The Democrat Party can. Given the icy relationship, I want to get your reaction. What, is, what has been the Republican response to that? Yeah, probably not the best way to to start off your your governorship by by throwing a wrench into the whole process. And look, we know that this is going to be a situation where we're trying to figure out, you know, where's the balance, right? What bills can we get through? What are we gonna agree on? Um, for her to make that comment uh, didn't obviously sit well amongst Republicans in the House, that we control both chambers. Mm -hmm. So our goal has always been, look, we gotta get a budget across the finish line. She vetoed that right away, uh, which is concerning because this baseline budget is just to keep Arizona open. Mm -hmm. And so, by her doing that and then making that comment uh, doesn't give me a lot of hope. So hopefully that, yeah. that changes in the, in the coming weeks. And, and we'll get to the budget hopefully here sure. in a minute. But I do want to you know, just take, take this as a push back a little bit. Could you blame the governor? She was duly elected sure. um, by the voters in the state of Arizona on, a, on, a, on an agenda. And from day one of the legislature, certain Republicans, and I'm saying you were the one that came out and did that, but certain Republicans come out and said, threatened to sue the governor for her use of executive orders, threatened to block her agenda. Um, they, you know, just this past week, uh, you know, lawmakers passed a series of tax cuts that would have drained money away from uh, that Hobbs intended to use to fund her priorities again that she was elected on. So can you really blame her for coming out and saying, okay, they, you, let's play hardball. If they're going to, this is the way they're going to play, I'm going to do the same thing. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think that's the right approach, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I think that you have to figure out a way. Look, you're, you're in the governor's office, you're the ninth floor. Your goal is how do we come together as one? That should have been the objective. And so for her to come out and say that, I, it, to me, it was a rookie mistake. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't have done that if I was the governor, if this was switched. My goal has always been what do we do that's best for the state of Arizona? And, and that doesn't mean we're playing party politics like mm -hmm. she obviously has just done. Um, and so hopefully that changes. Like I said, we, our, our one constitutional duty is to pass a budget as a legislature, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that Arizona stays open. That's our goal. Mm -hmm. and, and so if she's not on board, then you know, she's going to have to answer to the people of Arizona on, on why we're shutting down. And so, so you know, you, can you really just blame her on this? I mean, it seems like it is deadlocked right now. Why, you know, why doesn't Republicans share in some of the culpability? Again, you know, some of the statements that have been made from day one about this governor from Republicans have shown many Republicans, I'm not saying you specifically, sure. just do not want to work with this governor at all. Right. And, and I think that's the point where, look, you're, you're going to have people on both sides that are going to be arguing yeah. and saying things. Maybe they're not right. Maybe they, they shouldn't have been said. The bottom line, though, is we're all adults, right? What's on the line here is keeping Arizona open. So for me, I think, look, you got to look past that. There are mm -hmm. many times when I'm, I'm called things and said things about me, which are sure. not true. You got to get it past that. You, you have to keep the state of Arizona open. This budget, this baseline budget, was the right move because mm -hmm. it, keeps Arizona, it keeps the schools open, it keeps the law enforcement funded. Then you can, you can figure out what do we do with the rest of the money. That's what needs to be happening. So we keep everything open, we keep Arizona moving. For her to, to veto that mm -hmm. sends a message that she wants to play party politics. She's got to be better than that. Yeah, he's shocked, you know, politics at the legislature. <laughs> but again, you get back to the politics, right. she won. And sure. she did have an agenda. She wants to get that through. And you've shown that you're not, Republicans have shown that they're just not willing to work with any of that. Um, and I, I do want to get to some of the veto sure. stuff here. Again, I believe 14 vetoes. She hasn't signed a single piece of legislation right. uh, in the law at this point. The latest one was the rental tax. Right. Now, this is getting a lot of attention. I noticed on social media, mm -hmm. people are really heated about this bill one way or the other because right. housing prices have skyrocketed in Arizona. Correct. Um, but she vetoed this because she says, like, look, there's no guarantee that renters are going to see any savings. And so I wanted to share this story with you because as rural legislators, a lot of us come out here and we actually rent when mm -hmm. we're out here in rural Arizona because we obviously don't have places out here. So I can tell you personal, from personal experience, when I have a rental agreement with my apartment out here, it's actually a line item. Mm -hmm. So I have my 1500 a month, for example, mm -hmm. and then there's a line item for that tax. Yeah. So you will absolutely see a savings as you're a renter out here. Mm -hmm. So she was saying like, look, this is not gonna mean anything. It's only a couple hundred dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Look, for people that are struggling that are trying to make ends meet, $200 a year is a lot, mm -hmm. right? You're talking about groceries, you're talking about gas. So 
I believe that she's completely incorrect on saying that this is not going to matter. This is, and this is somebody who says she wants to remove the tax from feminine products, from diapers. Mm -hmm. It's the same number. You're talking $100, $200 a year mm -hmm. for these individuals. So if that's okay, but the rental is not, that doesn't make any sense. But I, I believe, though, you know, when you redo the lease agreement, nothing prevents the landlords from raising the, the rent on that because a lease of a year, sure. six months, whatever you agree to, landlords can just raise that, sure. that rent up. And I was going to ask you if Republicans truly are interested in looking out for renters. There was a Democrat-sponsored bill this year that would have capped uh, uh, raise, uh, rental increases at 5%. That bill never got a hearing. Right. And look, and that's something that we're, we're just not going to see eye to eye on as Republicans on any kind of rent control. Mm -hmm. um, that's just something that we don't, uh, don't agree with. We, we think that the better option is going to be, look, let's remove things, even if they're small, rental mm -hmm. tax, food tax, which is going to come up next. Mm -hmm. right? We're talking about the grocery food tax. How do we remove that? Is she going to veto that as well mm -hmm. because it's not significant enough? Look, these little pieces that are $10 here, $20 here a month, they add up. Mm -hmm. And bottom line, we are struggling as Arizonans. Uh, we need to do something, even mm -hmm. if it's small. We have to do something. And i got to wrap up here. Final sure. question. We did just have Attorney General Chris Mays on. I yep. wanted to ask, what's the response Republicans, uh, when they see this report come out that Brnovich had sat on all this information, Republicans have, have, have sponsored a lot of legislation right. dealing with election bills. Some of that has been inspired by some of the claims, debunked claims uh, about election fraud. Is, does this chill their efforts at all, the Republicans, your caucus? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, Attorney General Bernovich just have to answer those questions when the time comes. But I do think that if you look back in history, 2016, you, you see a lot of people talking about our elections having issues, right? Mm -hmm. Whether Hillary Clinton mentioned this in 2016 after Trump won, a lot of Democrats did. Bottom line is you have things that can be fixed. And we saw at the legislature this last week, we had bipartisan bills that passed that mm -hmm. were election related. Dems and Republicans voted on it, right? Common sense stuff. And mm -hmm. we're talking things like, uh, we had a bill that says, look, if you're a, 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 involved in our elections, you shouldn't be running a PAC, uh, bipartisan support. Mm -hmm. You had a bill from uh, Representative Colladin that deals with signature verification, bipartisan support. So I think that as, as citizens, as voters, we can all agree there's things that we need to tighten, things that are, we have issues with our elections mm -hmm. on. Let's get those fixed. Let's figure it out. In regards to General Bur or, uh, Attorney General Brnovich, look, he's going to have to answer those questions himself. I'm sure he's, uh, he'll be doing that shortly. All right, going to have to end it right there. But uh, up next, I'm bringing in our panel.